Okay, we're now going to move on to the gross income tab of the CalCAF Enterprise Spreadsheet for calculating unit cost of production. So from the production profile, we click on the tab down there that says gross income. And now we're ready to start accounting for the income side of the ranch. So I've got several different tabs here, or several different uh, types of animals that could be sold. Uh, whatever you're selling, change that to, to match it. Uh, for the Lugnut Ranch, as we look in the ranch description, we get down here into sales, and we see we have steer calves, heifer calves, coal cows, coal replacement heifers, and coal bulls. You'll notice that the ranch is selling every calf that they raised, steers and heifers. Now this ranch actually runs these heifer calves over into a yearling enterprise and then holds back the replacement heifers from that yearling enterprise. But for accounting purposes, we are going to sell each one of these heifer calves from the cow-calf business. Uh, now, actually, we'll see later that these heifer calves are bought by the stocker business, but uh, they are being sold at this point in time. So let's enter those into the spreadsheet. So we have steer calves, and I've got my list printed off here so I can remember what they were. 137, they average 515 pounds, and uh, this, these are old numbers, but we're going to price them at $125 per hundredweight. Uh, heifer calves, 166 of them, averaging 475 pounds, priced at $120 per hundredweight. Cull cows, looks like we had 39 of those sold, and they're going to weigh about 1,200 pounds, and we're going to price them at 49 cents. So if you just have total gross receipts on those, just enter that number right there. If you don't do it by the 100 weight, uh, you just do the math and, and enter that number in there. So just make it work for you. Uh, we're not going to do any coal replacement heifers. We've got a few coal bulls at 1,900 pounds, and they were $59 a 100 weight. Okay, so that's all that this ranch has in terms of sales. Now we get down here into the beef cow inventory number. And uh, this can be kind of a, a tricky part here and can confuse quite a few folks, but let's work through it slowly. Here we're accounting for cash sales to the ranch, uh, but we also need to account for inventory changes on the ranch. For example, let's say we had a uh, we're retaining we're building the herd we're retaining heifers, so uh, we may not sell as many heifer calves, uh, but our our herd is going to grow in value. So we need to account for that increase in herd value. Conversely, let's say we had a drought year and we sold a bunch of cows off. Well, we'd see a lot of cash sales during that year, but our herd invent value inventory value would change. So this is an opportunity to account for either herd growth or reduction and account for that value in terms of dollars and cents and uh, attribute it to the to the um, it, um, gross income of the ranch. So there's a tab down here for cow herd inventory change and here we just look at uh, an inventory on January 1, inventory on December 31st and then give a dollar value per head to that inventory change. So let's go back here to our ranch description and if I scroll up a little bit we see in the cow calf business there's our herd inventory right there. This is January 1 inventory here Here's the December 31st inventory, and then here's an estimated market value that's consistent value uh, for those. Uh, the rule of thumb for that, for determining that value is if you had to take all your animals to the sale barn at any day of the year, what would be a, a very comfortable number that you're sure they would bring? So let's not, if we've got some fancy cows uh, and, and we wanted to put uh, $2,000 in there for our cows, I would be a little hesitant to do that. Uh, let's put a number in there that we're sure we could get for those animals animals any day of the year. Uh, so we're going to use these numbers for, for this particular year. Again, this is uh, a little bit dated in terms of their values. but uh, So let's enter that into, into our spreadsheet. So here we are on the herd inventory page. Going back to my numbers that I have printed off, on January 1 we had 285 cows. On December 31st we just reduced that by one. And we're going to say these are worth $1,100 per head. So you can see it does the math for us. That's what our herd, that's what our cows were worth on January 1. There's what they were worth on December 31st. So obviously if we only changed by one head, then we only reduced our cow numbers by $1,100. So we can do that by each of our, each of our animal types. So our, our total herd inventory only changed by $1,100. So as we go back to our gross income tab, 
you'll see that those numbers come over. There's our beginning inventory, ending inventory, and the difference in that. So the way this works is all these numbers from cash sales are added up, and this number here is added in. You can see this would be a much more uh, bigger deal if we had major herd inventory changes over the course of that year. If we'd sold off a lot of cows, if we'd retained a lot of heifer calves, then that number would play a major role in the total gross income of the ranch. So all these numbers plus this negative number gives us our total gross income for the ranch divided by the number of cows on January 1st gives us that number which is uh, total gross income per cow. This steer calf equivalent number is calculated by dividing that number by the value of a steer calf. In this case it's $125 per hundredweight and what that tells you is it, it, it's just a number that's used to calculate the unit cost of production but that tells you each cow on the ranch contributes 5.1 steer calf oops, steer calf equivalents in, in herd value. So we'll use that number later in the in the spreadsheet to calculate unit cost of production. Uh, price received per hundred weight of steer calf, that number just fetches this number here that's used in that calculation. So um, so that herd inventory value is, is probably the most confusing part of this tab of the spreadsheet and hopefully we've explained it well here. It just counts for herd inventory growth or reduction and includes that in gross income to the ranch. So now we're ready to move on to the feed cost tab.